Uh, hey guys, John here with another Knife Making Tuesday. This is week six, and uh, I gotta say I don't really have a lot to do. Uh, the past few days I've been like, what am I gonna do? I don't know. I don't have any plans really for the day, um, <clears throat> nor do I have a lot of time due to family reasons and all that stuff. But um, I gotta say, I've been carrying this for the past week. Obviously it's not sharp and not perfect or anything like that, but straight off the machine, this edge will cut paper. It won't slice paper like butter, but it'll cut through paper right off the machine, not sharpened or anything. Um, so that's cool. But I went to a little uh, USN knife gathering uh, on Saturday. Got short around to 20, 30 people or so, and I got such so much great feedback and uh, figured out you know how to do the button lock properly next time. I got to play with a lot of awesome knives, <coughs> and I uh, got so many great comments and suggestions for the knife. And orders actually, but lots of people, you know, they said when you have it ready, I want one. Um, one guy wants a Chad Nichols Damascus blade. That's gonna look awesome. Um, so I think talking with all those people, I'm gonna leave this exactly as it is. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna modify it, fix it, change it, or anything. This is prototype number one, and it's gonna stay like this forever. As a reference point, you know, this is my first knife. Yeah, there's a lot of mistakes and stuff, um, but it needs to stay that way. And from now on, I'll make another knife, and uh, the next one will be obviously better. So, that leaves me to figure out what I'm going to do today. Um, I'm not ready to start building knife number two yet. Uh, it's going to take some time and figuring out and stuff, and I only have a few hours today. So I think I'm going to play around with my milling machine and tweak it up a little bit. One thing that's been bothering me <coughs> for since as long as I've been using it, <coughs> the purpose of these horizontal lines, diagonal lines, is to surface the material flat, to get it to the exact right thickness that I want. Except, if you listen real close, I'm going to run my finger along it. There's a ridge between every one of those lines that I can catch my fingernail on. And that is because, here's my milling machine, the cutter goes right in here, and imagine the cutter is flat on the bottom, so it's flat. But if, if the machine is tilted to the side, front or back, side to side, then the cutter will not be perfectly flat. It'll be off to the side, it'll be to the front. And my machine is quite a bit to the front and a little bit to the side. Um, and that's causing that uneven uh, uneven surface. And even tumbling it for a long time, you can still see it. You know, this is supposed to smooth it out. Obviously, I can't catch my finger on it anymore. But you can still see all those lines, and that's not ideal to me. <clears throat> it's, it's wrong. Um, so the, today's job is to adjust this machine. Um, you can see there's a circle right in there, if you can't see it. That's where it pivots side to side. On the back there's a big old bolt, and then I've created this orange brace, and that's to help strengthen it and tie the uh, Z column to the base. So that's a great uh, upgrade to the machine. Um, but so I got the unbolted on the bottom, I'm going to loosen this, and that will adjust it side to side. And then to adjust it, it's also quite a bit adjusted front to back. Uh, now this machine doesn't particularly adjust that way, but we're going to make it. So you see it bolts, three bolts, right there, there, and there. And I've got them loose right now. So I can take the machine, and I can move this whole thing. Okay? So what I'm going to do is add little shims. Now, if you don't know what a shim is, this is a shim. This is seven thousandths of an inch thick. Uh, for reference, a human hair is roughly, usually about three thousandths of an inch. So this is super thin. And uh, I, f I think I figured out the magic number will be four thousandths. So you can actually see I've got, I cut it up into little chunks. I've got one there, one there, and one over in the corner. So this is a four thousandths of an inch thin shim that I've sort of got under each bolt at the leading edge of that plate. 
so that when it's bolted down, it'll move up four thousandths. So, <clears throat> and then to measure it, what I'm doing is this is a, a dial indicator. As the plunger moves up, the needle moves. So I chuck this up right here, and then I can touch and rotate around and touch. So I'm going to bolt it together, and we'll see how close it was. Um, previously, the discrepancy was if this is zero, this is 17 thousandths of an inch higher. So the machine is tilted down, uh, it's tilted down 17 thousandths of an inch uh, upon this axis. So it took me a lot of calculations to figure out, you know, basically this is a square to there to there, pivot points right about there, and you know how much degrees of back movement and how much lift right there equals 17 thousandths. So it took me a while to kind of figure that out, but I'll bolt it together and we'll try it out. Okay, we're much closer, but we're not quite there yet. Notice how this edge, this front edge is four. Focus. Yeah. Is point zero zero four, pretty much. And then if we rotate it back to the back edge, get it centered, it'll say roughly zero. Well. So if the back edge is zero and the front edge is four, it's still four thousandths of an inch. Uh, hugely better than 17. But I think I'm still going to, while I've got it all apart, I'm going to make it perfect. So I installed a six thousandths of an inch shim. You can see it's about zero on that side, on the back edge. Move to the front. <coughs> front edge we have one thousandth, one and a half. And I'm gonna call it there, that's that's good enough for me. That's over a sweep of, <clears throat> from here to here, three inches. So you would need a tool that's three inches in diameter to be able to notice that one and a half thou. You know, when I use little, uh, it's an eighth inch end mill, one and a half thou across a width of three thousandths, if that makes or three three inches, does that make sense? Uh, you're not going to notice it on an eighth inch end mill. This is going to be pretty much perfectly flat. So very happy about that. So that's front to back is now perfect. Left to right. Let's see if that's two thousandths. Over here it says negative two. So we're a few degrees off. Side to side adjustment is going much easier. I've just got the bolt snug tight in the back, and then I can uh, sort of use my hand and boom, boom, side to side, so I can angle it side to side since it rotates. Uh, and it's only taken a few a few tries to uh, to get it within one thousandth of an inch, which is my goal pretty much. So now I'm torquing it down with my torque wrench <coughs> to 50 foot pounds, and I was smart last time. I uh, I wrote 50 foot pounds, so I don't forget. So we'll torque it down and then we'll test it again and if it's good, we're good. So there we have it. My machine is all souped up and zeroed in. Uh, that whole process is called tramming the machine. And right here I got a big piece of aluminum for making more uh, Emerson CQC7 scales. These are my dragon scales. So I'm going to make some more of those today. And uh, <clears throat> hopefully they'll be a lot flatter so you don't cut your fingernail on the lines anymore. And then once I tumble them, you won't be able to see those lines at all. Love it. So I'm gonna make that today. Might make some annexes too later on. But that's my knife making Tuesday. Sorry it was kind of boring and no real knife content, but such is the life, you know. When the machine breaks, you gotta fix it. Or when it goes out of adjustment, you gotta readjust. So that was today, and um, I don't know, i got to start working on my second knife now. <clears throat> so I'll think about that till next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.